This is the shocking moment a Russian tank was destroyed by Ukrainian forces as the war between the two nations entered its 20th day. Footage was shared by Ukraine's Ministry of Defense with the message, Game Over Russian Invaders. The clip appears to show a lone Russian tank explode into a fireball after either being hit by an anti-tank missile or coming into contact with a mine. The full message accompanying the video which was shared earlier today read, 25th Separate Airborne Brigade Sykeslov Brigade, Game Over, Russian Invaders. The paratroopers continue to multiply the Moksha army to zero with accurate shots. We will win. Glory to Ukraine. Meanwhile, a graphic released by the Ukrainian government shows the tally of Russian equipment that has been destroyed in the 20 days since the war started. It comes just days after newly released footage filmed on Defender drones showed the Ukrainian army wiping out multiple Russian armored vehicles and a command center as the war enters its 18th day. The first video was shared online on Sunday morning and appears to show rockets being fired at three armored vehicles in the besieged Ukrainian city of Mariupol in the southeastern part of the country. The aerial footage, which was circulated by several unverified accounts, showed a BTR-82 APC and Kamez-63968 Typhoon vehicle being targeted successfully. It is not clear when the strike took place. The BTR-82A is an advanced 8x8 wheeled armored personnel carrier APC, being manufactured by in Russia for use by the armies of Russia and Kazakhstan. The second video footage was also shared online on Sunday and shows a drone strike on a Russian command center in southern Ukraine. The footage was released by the Ukrainian army who said it shows the Russian command and control center destroyed near Vasilivka, in the Mykolaiv region by a Bayraktar drone. It is unknown if or how many casualties there were involved in both strikes on Russian forces. It comes as Kiev, the capital, suffered another round of bombing on Tuesday morning as apartment blocks were set on fire by early hours strikes. Kharkiv came under attack again on Tuesday, with the city's mayor saying that more than 600 buildings have been destroyed there since the start of Russia's invasion. Schools, nurseries, hospitals, clinics have been destroyed, said Mayor Iyer Terakov in a televised interview on Tuesday. The Russian army is constantly shelling us from the ground and the air. Ukraine's military said four Russian helicopters, a jet, and a cruise missile were shot down by its forces which remained in control of all major cities, including the badly hit southern port of Mariupol. Meanwhile Zelensky, speaking to British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and representatives from Baltic and Northern European countries via video conference today, said Vladimir Putin's invasion had undermined the European security infrastructure by invading a sovereign country and expressed his frustration that Ukraine had not been allowed to join NATO. Speaking through an interpreter he said the alliance's open doors policy had not worked for Ukraine. Of course Ukraine is not a NATO member, we understand that, he said. We have heard for many years about the open doors, but we also heard that we can't enter those doors. This is the truth and we have simply to accept it as it is. Zelensky requested military supplies, which he said were being rapidly used up. The amount that we are getting per week is used, usually by us, within 20 hours, he said. You know the kind of weapons we need, everyone knows. He also called for a full trade embargo, warning that Western sanctions are not enough to end Russian aggression and said Moscow's navy vessels should be barred from ports around the world and all Russian banks excluded from the SWIFT financial messaging system.
We have to acknowledge Russia as a rogue state and there has to be a trade embargo with Russia. This is something that we need and you need as well, just like the rest of the world, to make sure there is peace in Europe and Ukraine, he said. Zelensky also criticized firms which continued doing business with Russia warning that they don't care about the 97 kids who were killed so far and condemning international leaders for being silent as nuclear power plants are captured and shelled.